Guys, I have another video lined up for you guys. We're gonna take it back for another car review. And this time I got my good homie, Matthew. Now, if you remember Matthew, he had the Volkswagen Golf GTI. Do you still own that, Matthew? Yes, I do for now. I'm trying to sell it for an R right now. Oh, dang, what color R? Uh, same blue. Have you test drove any? I did, I test drove a 2017. I was stage two already. I really wanted to pull the trigger, but um, it didn't have a couple of the features that I was looking for, like a adaptive cruise control and stuff like that. So. Dang, well good luck with that. I can't wait to maybe do a possible review on that next yeah. time. But uh, in the meantime, we got this beauty. What do we got here, Matthew? Uh, so this is my 66 Mustang project car that me and my dad have been working on for the last few years. Wow, love the color. So this is not the original color. The original color, I believe the official Ford name was Sauturn Green. So it's like a gold green. I can show you that in a minute. Um, the trunk is still painted that color, but the original owner ended up painting it this um, beige color, which was a color that was available back then that they wanted. Um, but the story that they gave us is they didn't have a beige one on the lot at the time, so they went ahead and painted it beige themselves. How long have you owned this? Uh, just over two years now. Wow. Was it always running? No. So when me and my dad first got it, um, it had been sitting since 2010 was the last time it ran and um, we were fortunate enough we actually bought this off of one of my neighbors who lived across the street and one house over so we literally just were able to just push it oh. over to my house it was only like 50 feet over and did you guys buy this with the mentality of maybe bonding together and building it together yeah so we my dad always wanted this to be my first car we actually wanted it to be my um, high school senior project um, it was uh, owned by an older gentleman who his mom up until his mom passed away and he was probably 60 or 70 didn't really leave the house or anything like that but um, he had a bunch of cool Mustangs he had a boss he had this he had um, a Bronco like an OG Bronco and then a, a new edge Mustang too so uh, my dad always tried to buy it off him and would never sell it to me until about uh, three years ago when the mom unfortunately passed away and my mom or excuse me his mom knew that we had always wanted to buy it so uh, she gave him the green light to go ahead and so. And uh, what was the most difficult part about making this car run? Probably just the patience, man. So um, when we originally bought it, me and my dad had the mindset of, you know, we're going to tear it down, we're going to rebuild it ourselves. But just with all the time that it was going to take, um, I was working full time. He obviously works full time too. We just unfortunately just didn't end up having the time. We did a couple little things like replace the oil pan, replace the gasket. Um, I painted the um, the block myself and stuff like that. But the internal stuff we just didn't have the time to do, so we ended up sending it to a shop. I believe it was called ECM in Santa Ana. I may have gotten that name wrong. I'm sorry, but um, that was definitely the longest time, just having to go six to eight weeks at a time for every single part to wait for it to come in and then wait for it to be installed. Okay, so this being a what year? It's a 66. 66. Now there are some styling cues that they still hold to this day. Um, Correct. Can you tell um, us some of those. Ford is super good with um, continuing heritage and stuff. So for example, these three little lines right here, this is original from 66. And if you are have any knowledge about any cars at all, you'll know that these three lights right here are also on the LED running lights on the newer Mustangs as well. Wow. Same thing with the side panel, no? Yeah, so the side panel, obviously it's not identical, but they still have this little cutout on the, um, the modern Mustangs. I don't think it's as big, but um, they still do have that. And then the taillights as well. It's got the triple taillights. Now, obviously, they're sequential. They weren't sequential back then. But um, starting in 2010 onward, um, they started making them sequential. It's a little nice, a little nod to the, to the history of the vehicle. Absolutely. Like I said, I love that part about Ford, how they keep the heritage and they keep those little design cues going. Now speaking of generation. Mustangs in general, um, would you see yourself buying a new Mustang at all? Did you ever own a Mustang? So this is my second Mustang now. Um, my original was a 2010 GT. Uh, I blew the transmission four times in that car. So I was kind of over the whole Mustang thing. I had honestly given up hope on ever getting this thing. Um, but I got to be honest, I did kind of get that bug again. Uh, I have been looking at some of the newer Mustangs. I don't think I'd get like a 2010 or anything like that, I'd probably have to get like a 2013 to 14, just a little bit um, more, because my 2010 was the 4.6 V8, so I'd probably just go with like a Gen 1 Coyote, because the market's really good for them right now. Can we take a look at the engine, Matthew? Absolutely, man. Now, what kind of attention do you get in this? So, as it sits right here, um, it's not really that major of attention. If people who don't really know what it is, they'll see the rust on the top, and they go, man, that's a kind of a piece of shit. But then, when I do this, when it starts to get all that attention. <laughs> this is nice. What do we got going on here? So this is the original Block 289. Uh, it's got a four-barrel carburetor on there. 
Uh, like I said, I hand painted all the stuff. It's got the MSD ignition timer and all that stuff. Wow. And obviously your dad helped you out with this. Did he, did he have a major uh, take on helping you understand where everything belongs? Yeah, so this is my first carbureted car. So um, the whole process was definitely a, um, a learning experience for me. His um, One of his first cars was a 70 Camaro that um, he completely rebuilt um, with Corvette engine parts and stuff like that. So he obviously had a lot more knowledge working on carbureted engines than I did. Um, but the same basic principles there. I mean, obviously the pistons are in the same spot, cams in the same spot and stuff like that. So uh, with the paint, are you planning to do anything with the paint? Yeah, so the original color, like I said earlier, is called Sauternes Green. I may be correct, but that is the original color. So it's like a gold green right here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the original owner, when they bought it, um, they wanted this beige. No, it does show up on camera. Pretty good. Yeah. So they wanted it beige, so what they did is they bought the green one because that's what was on the lot. And then they uh, ended up just repainting it beige. Wow. Let's take it to the interior. Yeah. So it's um, untouched. I uh, got that on order. Right now we went to a local shop. It's got a SoCal auto upholstery. Dude's been in business for longer than we've both been alive combined. So um, it got recommended to me by one of my neighbors. So that stuff's ordered. Uh, seats are gonna get reupholstered. Uh, and then headliner's gonna be put in as well. A little nod to the Mustang design as well? Yeah. Do they still uh, hold so to this the, day? Yeah, so the newer Mustangs still have that little bit of a door cut out in that uh, general shape. So. Wow. No, like I said in a previous video, we made a TikTok on this um, today. Um, when you're sitting in a car like this, it's like you're taken back in time. Um, it must feel so cool just listening to the music of the era as well. Yeah, so I do have the premium audio system by your uh, right elbow there. The radio uh, only gets AM because that's all that was around <laughs> back then. So it's all talk radio now. So um, I don't really turn it on. It does work, but we don't turn it on because I don't really feel like listening to talk radio that much. Love the design on the seats too. That's yeah, so cool. Yeah, so that's the, uh, this is the pony package. Mm -hmm. So that's all original. Um, you got the pony package for the car. And what did you say was down here next to my foot? So yeah, so that's the high beam control. So right it goes here. back to what you're talking about, how it feels like you're in a time machine and how much different things were back that's then. That's so cool. So yeah, that's the high beam control. I found that out on accident. Some of the controls, additional controls. Mm -hmm. We got the wiper, the lights. Love the gauges too. Yeah. And how many miles? Wow. So it doesn't go up to 100,000. It'll just click over. It's only a um, five digit. Yeah, um, I see that. Odometer, so um, it has 180,000 right now. That's so cool. The climate controls? Yeah. So they're like levers. Out, yeah, they're like levers, yeah. So we took out the uh, air conditioning box. It wasn't working and it's like 30 or 40 pounds of just useless metal right now. So we took it out, um, thinking about getting it restored. Might not. Might go with a more um, modern rendition of it. Oh, the wood steering wheel feels amazing. Yeah, the steering wheel is huge too. Love this. All right, Matthew, I do want to thank you so much for your time and showing us this Absolutely, beauty. Uh, hopefully in the future we do see a, maybe a Golf R in the future, maybe do a review on that. We'll see, we'll see. The market's insane right now with um, selling your car, but obviously that pros and cons, so obviously the cars that you're going to have to buy are going to be a little bit marked up too. So it's all just a waiting game. You just got to find the right one with the right features at the right price. Oh, yeah, you got to be patient with something like that. Yeah, and there's for a car especially there's no settling man i'm not going to settle for something that doesn't have that one feature that i want because i'm going to be with it for the next couple of i years. hear you on that because it took me six months to find the right s2000 yeah. and look how beautiful it sits over there that guy is pretty cute walking over there huh? <laughs> hey well uh let's take it out for a drive yeah. um no canyons this time though. oh no no canyons i'm done with that but uh guys be on the lookout for a gopro pov drive of this car it should be the next video that i upload um right after this one but um Love the car, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Can't wait to see what you do with it. Absolutely. Have a good one, guys.